everyone. Hi, hello. Welcome to another exciting episode of Allison Rosen is your new best friend. I'm here in the studio with your husband and mine, Daniel Quantz. Hello, Daniel. Thanks for the enthusiastic uh, intro. Are you being sincere? No. I thought that, really? <laughs> I mean, listen, I feel like when I'm introduced, I deserve, I deserve something more akin to like, you know, hey, your husband and mine, but it was more like a your husband and mine. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is how I feel like you just throw away the mm-hmm. tonight in the intros. Oh, you want me to hit it harder? I want a large <laughs> tonight. Yes. I could give you larger tonight. And I feel like you're not aware. Uh, you're not able to modulate the tonights. And now I shoes on the other foot. Because I get no, it now. You were just distracted I, setting the, the clock while you were in, introing me. That's I know, I but you deserve undivided attention. I just wanted to start off with controversy. So I'm, <laughs> I'm making up controversy. Thank you. So we're in the studio. It is uh, um, it's unusual weather. And as I walked out, I thought to myself something that when other people say it, I roll my eyes and I think, oh, please, that's not a thing. It's earthquake weather. What, it, what does that mean? Well, to you? what? What is you earthquake weather? You stole my question. I oh. wanted to know what you think earthquake weather is. <laughs> but I never say that. I, I yeah, think it's I don't. This is why we're together. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you just said, said it like you had the thought. No, but I said, I said that I walked out and I, you're going to have to go back and listen. I said, I walked out and I said something that I always think is bullshit when other people say it. Oh, but I oh. had the thought, like, it was weird. It was no, like no, no. someone else was but thinking I it in my brain. I interpret that as saying you did have the thought, though, even though you think other people think it. Even though you think it's bullshit when other people say it. And I also think it's bullshit when I say it. I was just I surprised see. to have the thought. Let me tell you what. Wow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is like, okay, I've told the story before, but not in a long time. <laughs> when I was at Pomona College, which has been forefront of my thoughts lately, there was a big puppet show in a quarry called Buster Quinine. Of course. Now, Everything checks. Yeah. We got very stoned in Why Wendy Why Buster Molina. Quinine and not Buster Quarant? Quarry? Quarry Nine. I don't know. And like it was like the English professor had written this puppet show or something insane. Oh. So, so you got super high. In Wendy Molina's room. Okay. And then this gaggle of us, including this boy that I had a little crush on, and he later had like a break from reality and threatened... Um, a professor, and I remember thinking, I know how to pick them. Anyway, I hope he's well. Um, he looks like a young Jordan Catalano, or just a Jordan Catalano. Sure. Anyway, um, so we were, so anyway, we got very stoned, and then we went to the quarry to see Buster Quinine, and we sat on the grass. We probably got there like 10 minutes early. And I said, at, a, at some point, I said, I can't believe it hasn't started yet pretty straightforward right Mm -hmm. but i didn't mean it how you think i meant it i meant you you meant the the drugs no those had started (laughs) (laughs) i meant i can't believe we get all of this sitting here touching the grass wondering if i'm stoned looking like i felt like i had already seen three shows oh that's how fucked up i was so like i can't believe i get all of this pre-show and a puppet show. <laughs> I can't believe it hasn't even started every, yet. Every time you smoke weed, you should get a puppet show. I feel yeah. like if I were running for president, that would be my platform. Do you want to know what I remember about the puppet show? What's that? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I don't remember anything about it. Do you, wait, I just, wait, wait, wait. Because I was going to ask you what kind of puppets. You don't big, even remember They that. were like big and brown, I think. Like how big? I mean, in my mind, they were like 20 feet tall, but I oh. don't think- <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's... So this wasn't like a Punch and Judy show where it's like a box and someone's... Underneath. I truly... I mean, I feel like there was scaffolding. I don't remember... I don't know how they oh, pulled this cool. off. I don't... 
know how they pulled this off at all. I also don't know if they pulled what I'm remembering. Have off. you ever seen those giant puppets, like giant puppets? They'll have. I feel like it's in Italy. I think and I saw have a, them that night. A parade with like four story tall puppets. I'm searching Buster Quinine. Ugh. The only thing that's coming up is quinine is a drug. Why would <gasps> your English? What? Is, is that it? Did you find it? Oh. In October of 1972, that was before I was born, English professor Dick Barnes organized an experimental event featuring his play titled The Death of Buster Quinine. Billed as a sacramental farce and fire opera, the play took place in a rock quarry east of the Pomona College campus and featured giant puppets, original poetry and jazz, <laughs> How is this real? Fireworks, light sculptures, and a flaming jagannath. I don't know what that is. Equipped you, with whirling Mexican castillos. Much of it built with the assistance of arts faculty and students. And then they mentioned some students. This sounds great. I would love to go to that. Hold on. I'm going to swing around and look at this. Are there pictures? No, I I'm, I wish. But there is audio files. I would, I would totally dig doing that okay. if I were... Not I'm going to play Buster Quinine part one of two. Shit to do all the time. We're not going to hear the whole thing. I just want to hear what this, the beginning of it sounds like. Hmm. Oh my God. It's like an actual recording. There's no video. There's no images. If you click image. No, there's just a little turtle and a little rabbit to make it slower and faster. I gotta go a little faster. This is. This is. I this feel is like just ambient audio festival. Beats the shit out of that candle. <laughs> Coyotes and. Yeah, I mean. I feel like even if I hadn't been stoned, I would have felt like I were stoned. This sounds wonderful. It was. I actually have <clears throat> no memory of what it was. You know, I feel like this is the kind of thing that people make fun of. I know. I'm and making fun of it. I totally understand uh, making fun of Exper very indulgent, pretentious, experimental indulgent art. art, except that I actually, I actually love that shit. I mean – some of it, I, I a lot of it, obviously, I hate because it's when yeah. it's bad. But there's something about like just putting on a fucking crazy ass show, and I don't know, like maybe 20 years ago or even 10 years ago, I would have hated it. But now, in an age where I feel like the only consumption of art or media just happens through your digital means, mm -hmm. like through your phone or through a, a device. Anything that is that can't be viewed that way, anything that can only be experienced by going, is something that I love. I love that more now because yeah, of just how rare, how it, rare is. it is. Um, here's the thing: I would have preferred it if it were in a theater with seats and stuff. I am You're not, not an outdoors person, at though. one with nature, which no. takes us back to where where I started. So having to like, I hated when professors wanted to have the class outside. It was oh, really? impossible. It was impossible for me to focus on anything they were saying because I was just thinking like You're such I'm a nerd. sitting So you like I'm sitting cross legged <laughs> on grass. You... There's insects <laughs> in the grass. I'm wearing a giant flowing flammable skirt and there's grass touching my thighs. I'm uncomfortable. You didn't like it when teachers would be like, Let's study outside today because you wanted to hear what the teacher was saying. <laughs> I, I think the rest of us loved it because we couldn't pay attention to what the teachers. That was exactly why it was better. Uh, it was uh, like a day off. Yeah, but the teacher was still doing a lecture and you were still Who expected cares? to have heard it. Bye. If someone said, would you like to sit? You in listened to every lecture, really? No, not at all. You know that my friend Brian Booker uh, – who Wendy and I called the modern poetry Gestapo got <laughs> what? Yeah. Do you call him that? Because I hadn't done the reading one day before class. And he's like, Allison, you have to do the reading or else you can't participate in the discussion. It's like, Jesus Christ. I look back at my college on? years 
And I wonder if I did any of the reading. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back all. to the, here's the thing. At all. Daniel, would you like to sit uncomfortably in the bright sun while grass tries to enter your bunghole and some teacher <laughs> yes. talks kind of far away? Yes. Or would you rather sit inside? The former. But I thought we were bonded over disliking nature. We were talking about school. Okay. So anyway, point is, I don't like the outside. And the Buster Quinine thing, all I remember is what was happening in my immediate vicinity. I don't remember the puppet show. I was also very stoned. Um, okay. So, but that was like this whole, like, I had a thought, but it is bullshit, but I still have the thought. Um, it's hot. Okay. So the reason it's earthquake weather is <laughs> it's hot. The reason it is earthquake weather, yes. <laughs> This bullshit idea. Yes, the reason it is that. Yeah, the reason is... I the reason that thought entered my brain, uh-huh. I guess. Uh-huh. It's hot but very dry. <laughs> and it's bright. Uh-huh. No, no, sorry. It's not that hot though. It's like medium it's medium hot, dry, and bright. And in my mind, hot and dry is earthquake weather. What is this based on? Let's look it up. It's I don't know. I'm asking. We I literally had the have thought. had more earthquakes to date already this year than I think any other year, or at least close. But haven't you heard people say earthquake weather? No, I know. And there, the, people have all sorts of stupid ideas in their heads about things they don't understand. Um. Oh, <laughs> some theories about earthquake weather include calm, cloudy conditions. I think a lot of people think it's like. <gasps> Like the water gets into the ground and it loosens or something. Who knows? It, that's not how. That's not how it works. I just when I when it's like dry and kind of warm. It's then, fire weather. Okay, maybe that's what I meant. We're in fire season right now. So listen, you wanted to start with conflict. Well, I just thought, you know, why why not why, why not keep it going? So there's a thing called earthquake clouds. Yeah, no, we will keep it going. Uh, I actually need to offer you an apology. <laughs> what? I'm choking on the words. Wait, what's that? I'm choking like, on the words. I, I feel like my headphones are cutting out there. I, I need to offer you <laughs> an apology. Uh-huh. Those Listen. aren't Jeff's cheesy sound effects, by the way. That's me making my own cheesy Jeff's sound effects. beautiful sound, uh, sound effects. Go ahead. I need to offer you an apology. Okay. Okay, moving on. So, no, just kidding. Um, here's the thing. Two people wrote Slower. in. Sorry. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Two people wrote in mm. to let me know mm-hmm. that when I say I do mine and the kids' laundry, I handle mine and the kids' laundry, that's not really what I then proceeded to describe. And I hadn't thought about that fact. I hadn't thought about the fact that when I say I handle the kids in my laundry, I mean I put it in the laundry machine, put the detergent in, dial the little thing, press extra rinse, and then hit go. But that is what I meant. And that's not really doing the laundry. That's starting the laundry. That's starting the laundry. Yes. It's a process. So I am saying – but I wasn't – actively misrepresenting it which is what i think these two people thought i was doing which by the way thanks for the benefit of the doubt you guys they don't need to give you benefit of the doubt i would like they don't they need to give me the benefit they've only been listening for you know 12 or more years Mm -hmm. probably more even if they Mm go what is on my arm freckles but i felt like a anyway i can deal with that on my own time um I wasn't trying to misrepresent it. And if I were trying to misrepresent, how about the benefit of the doubt for this? If I were trying to misrepresent, I would have done a better job. I do I truly, think- Hang on. Yeah. I truly hadn't thought it all the way through that I was not describing it accurately. I the believe end. that to be true. I believed that at the time. I, yeah. I believe that in your mind, that, was, <laughs> that was doing the logic. No, I mean, I'm it giving was. you credit. You weren't... Yeah. You weren't trying to pull one over on anybody you legitimately have no idea what doing the laundry is <laughs> it's like you know when people say like are they lying are they stupid people don't say that my former employer no that. people say that he he's just he oh. had no original thoughts really that's a that's a trope <laughs> i didn't know that okay <clears throat> oh my bless god you. that was a bless weird, you weird big sneeze um anyway go ahead <sighs> stupid would, or liar 
Oh, you're, you're like, not, she's just stupid. <laughs> you're just, it's just one of the, it's a blind spot. Let's just put it that way. It's okay. I, a little bit, I feel like, um, I've likened our situation to Shit's Creek a tiny bit with mm-hmm. suddenly having no childcare. And <laughs> you also- mean like in, in our in our change of fortune? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, it feels very much like that. And then also, um, was it Made in Manhattan with your girlfriend, Ali Sheedy? Where I think she was like, wasn't really... that a J Lo movie made in Manhattan? Am I oh, getting it mistaken? Yes, you're right. There's a movie with Ali Sheedy where she goes from being very rich to having having to be a maid. Okay, let's see what it is. But anyway, sometimes I feel like that a little bit. Like I had this thought of like, oh my god, I never realized that she was folding and putting away all of our laundry. Like it never. Because, like, my God, there's just so much laundry all the time that has to be folded all the time. It's a, it's and I somehow thing. wasn't quite aware that on the periphery of my vision it was being done. Were yes. you aware? Yes. Because I, I, I can think of a lot of conversations where I was talking to her and she was folding laundry, but I wasn't aware that, like, that was something she did all the time. I think we all have, like, a thing. Uh, often there's, like, one or two things that are just for some reason – things that you hyper focus on like for you it's the counter in the kitchen like yes. there's this particular island that we have in the kitchen that even if the rest of the kitchen counter is the other counters mm-hmm. are are cluttered if that one is cluttered i feel like you lose all is lost you yeah. lose your mind and the entire rest of the house could have a mountain of shit everywhere but that one spot for some reason it's like your brain Thank like, you for making it sound so, <laughs> so neurotic. Well, no, like, I'm, I'm, I'm relating though, oh, okay. because what I'm saying is like, for me, it's the pile laundry. of laundry okay. and all, and really always has been, I think because it's like the couch area is where it ends up sitting. Yeah. And, um, yes, our, our wonderful, uh, former nanny, former nanny used to handle it. And I always was like, I was always like, God, I'm so grateful she does that. Yeah. And uh, you just ignored it. <laughs> I guess I did. I didn't realize. Because um, all of a sudden now I'm like, how does this get done? <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things, though, with you. It's like you have this uh, condition. Mm-hmm. And as much as it pains me, oh, it pains me to admit it is legitimate condition i don't want to be someone whose hands are so sensitive that if i touch fabric i begin to peel off of your skin which means that you cannot do and i put 90 (laughs) percent of the things that would be considered housework i know you can't do the fucking dishes Mm -hmm. you can't load or unload the dishwasher you can't put laundry into the dryer you can't take laundry out of the dryer you can't i can put the laundry laundry in you can put the laundry in for some strange reason uh, it's a miracle you can do anything. Like you probably should be walking around with like those cotton gloves. I like, can't even wear gloves. You can't even wear gloves. It <laughs> is. So who who does a lot of that? Me. And I th- sit there going, why do I have to do all this stuff? And then I remember the skin peeling off of your hands and I feel bad for you. Thank you. And um, But who's going to do it when I flee to Mexico? I guess I'll have to start trying on gloves all over again or something. Um, but there's stuff I do that you don't do. I, I, let's course, just not make it sound no, 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 so I'm saying, unbalanced. I'm saying just with those specific When things. it comes to things that involve hands. And by the way, the reason I can put the laundry in and I can't move it is because it has to do with moisture. Sort of. So but when I take – hang on. When I take all the clothes and take them from the washing machine to the dryer, then I'm touching a lot of wet stuff. Now, for some reason, when the stuff comes out of the dryer, it's extra absorbent. And then it like wicks the moisture out of my hands or irritates my hands even more. And I don't know why. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, Okay. The movie was. My only thing is like those are particular things that I would love to not have to do that I have to do in order to spare your hands. And. The lack of there being any choice in the matter sometimes just makes me go ah. Because I understand, but I don't. Re- I don't resent you for it. It's like one of those um, weird yeah, things. You do. No, I honestly don't resent you personally. <laughs> you resent having to do it. I resent that yeah. the situation is what it is. And then, as if to drive the point home, I did fold a bunch of laundry, and now my hands are peeling. 
Yes, and I feel bad about that, but go ahead. Made to order, 1987. Made to order. A snotty rich kid, Ali Sheedy, gets a lesson in hard knocks when her fairy godmother, Beverly D'Angelo, turns her into a penniless orphan. I want to say, Ali Sheedy, Your love. who I used to have the, a huge crush on uh, back in when I was you know, in the 80s, mm-hmm. when we were all in the 80s, frankly, yeah, your eighties and mine. I wasn't the only one in the eighties when I no, was in the eighties. No, uh, there was something I saw her in about five years ago, and I was like, um, "She's not aging well, or something." I don't, I don't know. I was like, nah. "Wow, rude." Well, you know, you see someone, and then you don't see them again until they're old. Yeah, and then you just see their well, oldness. Are you talking about seeing her in no, Andrew? No. Okay, and then I saw her in this recent documentary. She looks great. Andrew so McCarthy's I don't her. know if I just imagined it, but she's she looks great now. Mm-hmm. You know who else looks great? Fucking Demi Moore looks great. Everyone says Demi Moore looks great. It's because she got some kind of amazing plastic surgery. So I want to apologize oh, yeah. to Ali Sheedy for having... For taking her off your a, list. A, ...of what was a, a false opinion. Okay, Jerry Seinfeld. Uh, he just went back on what he said. He oh, about the yeah. liberals? Uh, Ali Sheedy looks great. She should be in stuff. She's a icon. Love her. Um, is she number two? Me being number one. Oh God, no. Juliet Binoche. Well, I mean, you're you're not number one either. <laughs> oh yeah, Juliet Binoche. Oh my God. She's yeah, amazing. give me your list. I don't know if I can really give you a list, honey. Give me some. Uh, Juliet Binoche. I'm a real Binoche head. I know you're a Binoche bro. I'm <laughs> a Binoche bro, right? <laughs> oh, I have to think this through. Is this young Juliet Binoche or is this? This is all Binoche. Oh, really? Binoche through the ages. She's <laughs> just, she's, there's something about these like European uh, stars where they, they kind of embrace their aging more than mm. the LA based ones. Okay. And I find that to be very sexy. All right. Uh, it's it's so it's such a fucked up thing right mm. because it's like you know i get it listen i before everyone's like daniel's so sexist by mm. getting on people who are just trying to not look i'm going to be getting every filler yeah. and all of the plastic surgery myself right i'm going to be looking like a chad worse <laughs> than the cat woman oh person jocelyn wildenstein or those twins remember those twins no the plastic surgery guys. Vaguely. Look them up. The the twins. Okay. Uh, I so want to hear I'm, your list. I am just as... And what I'm saying yeah, is... No, I'm, oh, we know. We know Mr. Quercetin. All right, listen. Uh, oh, do you know yeah. Who, who they is look it? bad. Eccentric French twins die of COVID. Um, oh, they died of COVID? Yeah, Igor oh. and Grishka Bogdanov. The Bogdanov. Man, they really like went the, crazy on the plastic surgery. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, they look really bad. They look like, like drawings. Mm. Yeah. Uh, all right. Fucking real talk, though. Uh, Julie Delpy. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any American ones that are on my list. Was but, Julie Delpy in Before Sunrise? Is that who yeah. that is? Okay. I guess my head right now is in the French. I I got to make myself my way around the. I go road, I go yeah. continent by continent. I didn't know you had a Julie Delpy thing. I literally never heard you say Julie Delpy. The list is is long and All deep, right. honey. Good. Before we get to you. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, you can't go wrong with Monica Bellucci, right? No. And she was. Oh, she was just... Wait, is, didn't she play Dolores, who I'm going to be for Halloween? I think so. Oh, was she? I didn't see the movie, so... Yeah, she was in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, which happens to be a sequel. I really don't know, hon. I mean, like, uh, I don't, I'm don't. i not one of these guys that has, like, a list. I'm just sort of naming it. Like, names. could you masturbate to when you were young, Alex <laughs> Sheedy? Uh, when I was young, it was literally any picture of any girl in her underwear that I could get my hands on. We're talking Sears catalogs. <laughs> <I'm> talking uh, 
Montgomery Ward catalog. <laughs> Most of catalog based. <laughs> Listen, I didn't have yeah, access. Man. We didn't yeah. have the internet. So, um, yes, to all you beauties that, that posed in your underwear. No, I'm just kidding. Mm. Uh, I don't know who I was really into as a kid. I mean, I guess. Hmm. I don't know. I don't remember who my, I know guys are usually like, this was my, Mm -hmm. I, the only reason I say Ali Sheedy is because like I had a fan, I had, was convinced I was just going to run into her at the airport and her (laughs) hair for some reason. But was it Ali Sheedy circle war games? Like which no, version? I think it was Breakfast, Breakfast Club, Club okay. era. But my Ali Sheedy thing, we make jokes about it. It's not like I was like into her for like a long period of time or anything. It was really just that one moment where I, I uh, thought I was going to meet her and impress her, I guess, or something. I'm not mm-hmm. sure what my thought was. I don't know what was going to happen. So listen, there's been a small death in the Quants family. Oh, this is a- R.I.P. Roly. Little Crawler Quants, which was Owen's pet Roly Poly. What was the name you had suggested for him? Roly Polian Bonaparte? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but he wanted Roly quote Little Crawler Quants. We he bought we bought him this ladybug terrarium where then you can send away for ladybug larva. Just gross when you think about it um but we haven't sent away for it yet so he put dirt and grass in the bottom and then took brought in a roly-poly from the yard and he (laughs) asked me to when he goes to school he wants me to make sure on him you know make sure he has enough food make sure he has enough water make sure on him (laughs) (laughs) so and then the first day he came home and he said what did you do for roly today and i was like oh i talked to him and i told him you're coming back and so then I was like, I don't think this really poly is going to make it past a day. I don't know why. I don't know if they just have really short lives, probably, or if it's just we have pulled him from the habitat he wants to be, and now he's in our kitchen. Um, but I was stunned when he was in a different place later that day because I was sure that he was already gone. Right. And then I found myself getting attached. Oh, no. Because <laughs> I was putting water on his little sponge in there, and I like – it was getting pretty exciting seeing, oh, he's in a different, mostly just checking to make sure he's still alive. Was But when he was alive, I was like, he's thriving. Yeah. Um, and Owen said he was, oh, he ha- coincidentally has the same birthday as Owen and he's three. Yeah. Um, and I mean, just a lot of backstory on him and a lot of like bonding between him and Owen. How many days did we have him? Maybe three or four. Yeah, that's it. That's and then last night, Owen said, because every time Owen comes in the kitchen, he wants to check on Rolly to make sure on him. Mm-hmm. And he said, oh, he's sleeping. <laughs> he's sleeping upside down. Mm. And then I quietly said to Daniel, I'm not sure. <laughs> right. He's still with us. And then Daniel said to Owen, you know, they don't have long lives. And then Owen's like, what? And I said, not a good before bed conversation. <sighs> Um, And then this morning he came out and he saw that he was still sleeping upside down. And he said, is it okay if I turn him over and close his eyes? Oh my God. (laughs) No, he didn't really say that. (laughs) He said, is it okay if I turn him over? And I said, yes. And I said, honey, I don't think he's still alive. And he, he was sad, but he he didn't cry. Surprisingly. I think it hasn't quite hit him yet. Um, (laughs) And then he said, he's okay. Because he can just get another one. And then we decided to send away for the ladybugs. So, Rolly, we hardly knew you. Yeah. Um, I think what I said was smart, though. That they have short lives? Yeah, because we prepped him to think he didn't, so that he wasn't like, oh, no, I killed him or anything. Oh, my God. The yeah. average lifespan of a Rolly Poly is between two and five years. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Maybe he was, you know. F- I don't think we were giving Roly <laughs> the life, the things he needed to stay alive. I'm, I'm not I sure feel his bad. habitat was. I think actually a murder. It wasn't a death in the Quants family. There was a murder. Oh, wait, hang on. Roly polies rarely live long indoors because the dry environment is not suitable for them. Okay. So yeah. maybe if he wants to have one again, 
we should put the terrarium outside. Well, I, I think the point is that it's too dry. It would be too dry in the terrarium that we have. Oh. They need the wet soil. Soil. Okay. Well, I feel bad. It's not I mean, bad. it's, I don't know. <laughs> You're not going to feel bad about it? <sighs> Listen, if I'm going to be sitting here feeling bad for a roly poly, then that opens the door to feeling bad about way Katie. too many things to feel bad about. What's and next I, on the list? I don't know what's next on the list, except that like I have to. There's so much tragedy and horror in the world. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta like slam the door before it, you know the list or slam the door on that list. <laughs> <laughs> The list is trying to get in the door. Right. Yeah. Get out of here, list. Yeah. Uh, no, I gotta cut the list off after like the after the the top where you pull it off a spiral notebook and it's got those like little right. little raggedy curlies at the top. Something like that. Yeah. So roly poly, it just doesn't. It can't. I can't be worried about the roly poly. I'm sorry. So tonight is the fall festival at our kids' school, <sighs> and Daniel is going to take Elliot, and I have to stay here with Owen because we have a commitment that will be an hour and a half. And then the plan is I will take Owen and meet you guys. Can I tell you what I'm secretly hoping happens? That you don't have to go? Correct. I'm hoping that Owen will change his mind because he, you know, he's not great in crowds or places with a ton of stimulation. And this is exactly that. It's a crowd with a shit ton of stimulation. It's loud. It's like dark with a lot of flashing lights and stuff. It's really kind of a sensory nightmare. And I'm pretty, am, am I not, am, I, I am correct that each time we go, he ends up in tears at some point, right? Owen does, yes. So do you think he really wants to go tonight? Because first he said he didn't want to go. And then Elliot, not an ally, reminded him that he does want to go. And then he's like, oh, I do want to go. Also, Elliot won an apple. So just to bring it full circle, I don't know if I'm really bringing it full circle, but I talked about the, and I'm not an apple pie person normally. Mm -hmm. However, last year, Elliot won a pie during a cakewalk. And I don't know if a cakewalk is a standardized thing, but they had a contest called a cakewalk. It was very random. Uh, and Elliot, You've never heard of a cakewalk before? I've heard of something being described as a cakewalk. But I don't know if you actually gamify it. If I know what that is, oh, I, is yeah, it I, I is it, it standard is. Mm -hmm. where someone ha like draws well, numbers? I don't know standard, but it's a traditional thing, like musical chairs. Yeah, it's a thing that people do, and then you win a, you win a pie or cake or whatever. So anyway, he won this apple pie that we located to a mom and pop bakery called Whole Foods. And it was the best apple pie. So and then we, then we went and we had that apple pie for Thanksgiving, I think, or maybe for Christmas. Are you going to do your thing this year, your, your campaign for bread pudding to become the tri traditional? Absolutely. My mom made it last year, so I didn't have to make it. That's right. Uh, but um, yeah, we, didn't we just have some amazing bread pudding? I feel like I just recently had some really good bread pudding. Yeah, was it at Morrison's? Yeah, that was really good. Mm, great talk. So anyway, Elliot is fully convinced he's going to win a pie again. I don't think he realizes how unlucky, I mean, how unusual, I know, and now how lucky he was. He'll be like, whatever, we're, you know, we're up at the casino. We sat down, mm -hmm. we won. Now yeah. we're going to be back down. Right. He's not going to win again. Right. Uh, but maybe we'll win the baskets. They have like this we table. We will never win one of those baskets. They have a table with tables with like maybe a hundred different like gift baskets and then you i not a hundred there's one for each class i you put raffle tickets oh, in each one motherfucker i forgot that that's such a big part of it that is just trad that is just a ticket to tragedy like buying a pet it is like so there's the okay so we you know because we're in burbank everyone here not everyone but there's a ton of people who have connections in entertainment so it'll be like a disney basket and it's like tickets to disneyland and like original cells from this movie and like or One day they had an encanto basket basket yeah. where they had like this toy that you can't even get anymore these are they're humongous baskets and you buy raffle tickets and then you place your tickets in the basket that you yeah, want. It's all a fundraiser for like the PTA or something. Yes. 
but Elliot really felt like he was purchasing these baskets. Like he did not understand why he didn't get any of them. Right. And, we, and then it, we've and yet the, to win one. And then it was like he really wanted that Encanto toy, but you couldn't buy it because it was some sort of like special thing that this employee at Disney had. Um, yeah, it was really uh, it was really fun. But so anyway, we're gonna win one year, I figure, right? Like we there's have so many, many years baskets. to be at the school. I hope so. But anyway, should I try to dissuade Owen from going? It's entirely up to you and Owen. I mean, it's, of course, nice to have you there. But for me, it's like chaos. Right. Because I'm, I'm sitting there having to wrangle Elliot and do the baskets. And it's not like it's... It's not enjoyable for me, even if you're there. Like, there's no... I wasn't version. really asking it what your pleasure is. I was... Well, then, then it doesn't matter. Okay. I mean... The, but but no, go ahead and tell me how it doesn't make it better if I'm there. <laughs> In general, <laughs> uh, no, because I can't. It's not like it's. It's not about uh, my experience right. or your experience. It's about the kids. So uh, if Owen wants to go, then you know you should yeah, go. If he fine. doesn't go, don't go. I don't know. Let's listen to a voice. I don't know that Elliot cares. Yeah. No. The question is like, would it be good for Owen to go? No. He... Okay. Does, I don't think. I mean, only if he thinks. No, it's no. Okay. All right. Cadaver dog. Do 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 do. Cadaver dog. Do do do. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, it's Rich from New Jersey. Just grooving along to your latest uh, viral sensation. Uh, and I wanted to tell you guys. I'm not telling you this story to freak Daniel out, but this is true. Um, my growing up, the kid who lived across the street from me was, um, how do I put this delicately, a bit more of an upper-class wealthy person uh, than the family I grew up in. What is this and, accent? Um, <laughs> when he moved, they moved literally to a mansion in an area of town called Llewellyn Park and uh, lived across the street from the old Thomas Edison mansion. Oh, wow. um, and it was this big three-floor. When you think of an English mansion with, like, giant sweeping lawns, it had a turret an actual turret. I like a turret. And somehow at the top of this spiral staircase, there were two rooms, one of which had a pool table. To this day, I can't figure out the logistics of how that pool table got in the turret. Probably like how you get a piano into a New York apartment. They had to lift it up and go through the turret window. Mm. But I digress. There were three floors to this house. And they had those kind of giant mansion stairways that are like double wide. <laughs> um, and the third floor they didn't use. Um, and it was dark all the time. Ugh. And I mean, pitch dark. You would get to the second floor, you would walk to that staircase and look up and you would lose vision some three quarters up the staircase. And uh, one of our delightful games was to see who could make it further up the staircase without freaking out and running down in sheer terror. So, yeah, that's uh, another uh, another glimpse into my weird childhood. So um, that's it. Keep on keeping on, Rich from New Jersey. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, Rich. Yeah, that I mean, that thought of, you know, buying a huge mansion and then not having – I, I, it literally is what I think every time I see one of those uh, huge mansions for sale. You know, like um, there was one in L.A. that's like the the most expensive house mm -hmm. in America or something like that, and it's still on the market. And I forget who – it was some famous producer owned it or something. And and it's got like a crazy amount of rooms, and it's like, yeah, it's like three stories or, you know, whatever. But you're like <laughs> – most of that house is going unused. Like you buy that, you know, you hear people who buy those houses and they, they have their like gift wrapping room uh -huh. and they have their, but there's only even so many of those kinds of rooms you could fill that place up with. Like it just seems to me like if I lived there. You could rent it out and then basically you have a big apartment house. Well, uh, turn it into a holiday. And I, if I lived there, I would be afraid of half of my mm -hmm. house. I would be like that, like Rich's story about the third floor. Yeah. Like, like either I'm keeping the lights on all the time and wasting energy, or it's just like I'm living in sheer terror of what is because I have a fear of empty houses, right? And so, no, I don't want that. I would want, 
I would want a modest sized night. My dream house is like pretty modest Tell in me. a nice area. I would prefer more land than yeah. house. Okay. I think. And, but I want the amenities. DQ wants the amenities. I want what? the pool. I want mm-hmm. the hot tub. Mm-hmm. I want the pool slash hot tub. I want the pool in in the house and outside of the house. <laughs> uh, Wait, that's not a common thing. We happened to see recently <laughs> a pool that went into a guest house, but like normally your pool is well, just no, outside. Want, the it, the dream is okay. You have the pool outside. It's got the like maybe even a little waterfall, mm, yeah. you know. But you definitely have the hot tub option, like. Mm-hmm. Kunkel, Doc Kunkel's house. Doc Kunkel had one of these. You know, you have the like really shallow area where you can just sort of like, uh, like the toddler pool area. Yeah, where you can sort of lounge but be in the water, sort of. You know what I mean? Remember when we put Wendy in that area and she just like she froze. froze. <laughs> so this is like you know when they have that like kind of long ledge. It's like a tod- the to- It's like a the water is like what two inches, two three inches deep, yeah, four inches deep. Yeah. Uh, and we put Wendy in it and she just stood there. <laughs> Like she wouldn't move a muscle. Like she's in quicksand. But then you okay. have this secret underground pool. Go on. Where you go into the basement, and then there's a whole other swimming pool inside. That uh, you would be afraid of that, I would think. It's true, but it would be be neat. neat. They have one of those I at want... the Hearst Castle. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what's his name? The Hadid uh, dad. Foss, his, uh, Muhammad Hadid. Yeah, his house uh, had one of those. Um, now I'm just kidding about that, though. Um, I don't know what I would want. Um, land. Yeah. Property. Uh, Jenna posted a photo of her family on a deck, which I'm assuming is theirs, and she said Domino's on the deck, something about got pizza something and then something about like fall in georgia and i was like oh my god like this is sets it looks just visually it's so different looking than la yeah and i just didn't know what their house looked like and it's so cute and i was like don't they live on a lake i think so i think she said they yeah i mean it's very like foresty and lakey and their house is cute and i mean should we move to somewhere that looks different well, I very much would prefer to live somewhere that got colder, yeah, and had fall and had seasons. It's been my dream my whole life. I have been cursed to live in sunny, hot environments, um, my entire life. Tucson, L.A., for a guy like me who was genetically engineered to live in the cold, um. Like right now, there are people who are wearing sweaters, and I'm jealous of those people. I know. Let me show you show you this photo that she posted. You got to put your finger down on it. Put your finger down. Put a finger down. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Mm. But... Not my dream. That is yeah. not my dream. Although I'm very happy for them. They seem to be very happy there. I don't I don't want the forest. Okay. What do you want? I'm not into I'm sorry. I'm not into forests. I don't think you need to apologize for not wanting forest. Uh I don't know why forests don't enchant me. But they don't. I think that what I would like, honestly, Montecito. Yes. <sighs> That is just, I, f- I feel like Montecito rivals anywhere on earth. Mm. Like, no, that's not Seasons. Montecito no, but is it like does get Santa colder. Santa Barbara is the, is the Oprah that's Winfrey true. section of Santa Barbara. It's true. There's no Seasons. I would, I would be fine with no Seasons if I lived in Montecito. The California coast between Montecito and like, well, probably what, like, uh, I don't know. Uh, it, Eureka? <laughs> is, there well, even, is there even an affordable or like rundown area of Montecito? 
Probably no. not, right? No. It's just Oprah Winfrey, Ellen DeGeneres. Who else is up there? The oh, Mar- Megan Harry. Markle. Yeah. Uh, I think Jennifer Aniston's up there. There's a lot. Of Do you think you songs. run into Jennifer Aniston at the grocery store? In Absolutely. Absolutely. There's just that little. That's a, there's that little market there. That's so all they have. I don't think there's. There might be if you go a little further, but right there, convenient to those homes. Yeah. There's just there's not much. Um, fuck, it's nice up there. Anyway, uh, I think I do. I uh, whatever. No, I want to hear. I want to hear the dream. Yes. I, I I guess I prefer more wide open sort of climates and uh, what do you call it? Um. Uh. Uh. Coastal. No. Habitats. <laughs> uh, like California. Know? And Arizona, I don't like the sunshine beating down on my skin all year long. Maybe you need to be in Northern California. But I, but I like the topography. I, I, I feel more comfortable. Uh, whatever. I feel like Northern California, although it can be hilly. That might be what you like. But that's foresty with the big redwoods guess, and stuff. Yeah. I, I, I like foresty. Should we, Should we have a Zoom up? relationship? Should we break up? Yes, I'm thinking. We'll have a Zoom relationship. I'll go back to Brooklyn. We have a we have friends who got married. Who? Go ahead. And one lived here in LA and one lived in yes. San Francisco and they made it work. They're still a making marriage. It work. Well, yes, but they trade I mean they they're together like every weekend. On the weekends only though. Yeah. They don't have kids though. Right. And they have a pool. And but you piano. never hear of that. You never hear about a long distance marriage. You don't hear about sharing custody while you're still married. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Okay, now you told me something about Sweeney Todd this oh, morning. Oh, I and I said save it for the show. I was not going to save it for the show. So I know. if you don't like this content, blame Allison. Yeah. Uh and I was telling Allison, who I know has no familiarity with or interest in this musical, and um, t- so I, stop, stop. Put a pin in it. Stop just as I stop was telling right her, there. stop right there. I wish we had couples counseling today. Think I love you, but can I just recapitulate for you what you just said? I was telling Allison, mm-hmm. who I know has no interest mm-hmm. or knowledge about what I was saying. Yes. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So then. Mm-hmm. But but you barreled you then you can't expect me to put down my phone during that conversation. I was it, during that conversation. Uh, I was not expecting you. I'm just saying, if you know already, you're just going to fill my head with stuff I don't want to hear about. In that particular case, if you had looked at your phone, it wouldn't have bothered me. Okay. Um, but I also want to. Oh, and then I got to share something that happened yesterday. Go ahead. I want to make clear to the audience. That when when Allison, who has no interest or knowledge of this subject matter, heard me talk about it, she thought that thing that I have no interest in, that would be great for the show. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, misery loves company. Uh, I listened to the new I, I cast recording. I just think there's other people who might care. The it's new cast recording of Sweeney Todd, which is one of sometimes my favorite. It goes, it's not. What's well, it between that and Les Mis? Yeah, but Les Mis, it feels so basic for that to be your favorite. Really? It, I, feel I know what you mean. Yeah, like this girl in seventh grade, it was her favorite. Les Mis is great. But Sweeney Todd, man, that's so good. Um, and the new cast recording with Josh Groban. Is that how you pronounce his name? What, or, or what? Groban? Or, or I want to say Groden. But isn't it's there, Groban. It's Groban. Are you thinking of Charles Groden? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Josh Groban and... Anna Lee Ashford. Anna Lee Ashford playing Mrs. Lovett. Is she the owner of the salon? The salon. <laughs> the barber shop. No, she owns the pie shop. Oh, that's what I mean. The worst pies in London. Yeah. It's better than the original. And who was in the original? Uh um see, this is how stupid I am. What's Angela your name? Lansbury, Angela Lansbury, you said earlier. I forget who the guy was. I don't even know. Okay. But so Angela Lansbury was Mrs. Lovett. And she's, I mean, like a lot of people have obviously played Mrs. Lovett. I mean, you've even had, um, this is how my brain is, that Patti Lapone has mm. played her. Uh, and some have 
you know, they all put their own little spin on it. I feel like Anna Lee was really fucking good. Like, I have to listen to it a few more times, but I'm like, is she better than Angela? She might, in some ways, be. She plays the comedy better. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how it plays in real life, right? Mm -hmm. This is just the recording, but uh, as a as a listen, pretty good. And they changed like some of the arrangements a little bit. I don't know. So, how would you just? It's pretty good. How would you describe the changes? It feels more seasoned. It feels uh, like... What does that mean? It feels like this is something where they've really worked it out. They've had years to work it out, you know? And, like, certain things that were maybe rushed in the original or slowed down. Uh, certain themes are... Uh, musical themes are, I feel like, given a little bit more prominence. And, again, like, the 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 ideas are communicated a little more clear, clearly. And that might just be because the original cast recording is probably done way early in the, in the production of it. And then they've had like 30 years or whatever to fucking do it or 40 years. I don't really know Sondheim well. What else is he known for? I know Sunday in the Park with George. And did he do Into the Woods, which I never He did Into the much. Woods. Okay. He wrote the, the, the words for West Side Story, uh, uh, he, but he did like a uh, company. Um... And he's everyone's favorite, right? Let me rephrase. I feel like people who are really into musical theater cite him as one of their favorites, usually, versus right. me. Like, I'm a. I'm a Weber gal through and through. And I don't know that, I don't mm. know how much we get, how much respect we get on the streets of the theater district. Yeah. Uh, so. I think Sondheim might be the greatest, and I think it's largely because of how textured his like the like he's really um, the music's great. The music, it, like he's very good at like uh, the use of music to convey theme and and but but the lyrics mm. are really clever you like if you listened to his musicals and you listened to the to the lyrics like as good as taylor swift <laughs> it's um he'll turn phrases and he'll have he'll use words to it, yes i'm to aware of how people can do things like this no no but i'm, I'm, th I'm trying to think of an example i'm stalling for time uh s there's a uh like in sweeney todd that one of the opening songs is uh how does it go it's um uh oh, okay so there's a song called no place like london mm -hmm. and it starts out and there's this sailor this young sailor and he is full of life and optimism and he they're coming off of this ship at the dock in london and he's and he's singing about there's i've been around the world and I've seen all these sites, but there's no place like London. And then uh, his song is interrupted by Sweeney, who is this dark character who has uh, been uh, spent decades. It's unclear how long. Uh, he was he was basically imprisoned or something he was taken away from london and mm. he's just been he's coming back for revenge he's mm. really he's like grizzled yeah and and he sings about london he's like there's I, he's been around the world and he's seen um the cruelty of man but there's no place like london in terms of cruelty of man right mm, see, see and he'll do that Foil, he'll, yeah. he'll do that kind of thing where it's like he'll he'll take something and and position it in different right. contexts and then it changes the meaning or it brings out new meaning. Um, and so there's a lot. I don't know. It's, it's... Does he have anything as good as this? Ho, Zana, hey, Zana, 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 ho, Zana, ho, Zana, hey. Zana. So I think of Weber as being hey, more, JC, more of a romantic. He's more, uh, he's almost like uh, this very decorative, mm. romantic yeah. songwriter, and uh, not really about the lyrics. Schmaltzy almost. Yeah, well, I don't he, think he, can't well, he didn't write that. his lyrics, did he? Tim Rice I don't even does. Know. I don't know if he writes them with Tim Rice. Did he write Jesus Christ Superstar? 
That is Weber, but I don't know if he's the lyricist. But did he, okay. He uh even though I just quoted it now. And yeah, it can it can be senti- overly sentimental. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that Sondheim is everly overly sentimental. He's not everly. He's not everly overly. I said overly. You said he's not everly overly. <laughs> did I? Yeah. I just want to say Uh-huh. My brain. I know. I'm not. I'm not Trump level brain deterioration, mm. but I'm getting there. Oh my god! Yesterday, that conversation. Did you hear what they've discovered that stars might have? And I thought Owen said worms, but he said rings. <laughs> I, I was asked- like, the idea that stars have worms is so disgusting and horrifying. <laughs> but like, it works at the same time. Uh, wait, people might not. Owen discovered okay. that stars can have rings, and he was sharing that information with you, but you thought he said worms. worms. <laughs> just combined. It's just my nightmare. Because it's like, are they humongous worms? What are they doing? Giant. But it also didn't giant seem. Star sized worms. It didn't seem impossible because they talk about wormholes. I feel like it, and like in Dune, and I feel like in futuristic sci fi, worms have a presence. So, like, it didn't seem impossible. Is my nose red? Let me see it. No. Okay, it feels red. So anyway, let's end this show in a moment. Okay. But I want to end on what for me was a triumphant marital moment. Oh, boy. Yeah. This can't be good. Not for you. No. Okay. <laughs> I was lying in bed. I had my phone out. And I was Googling something for Daniel. And... um. You came in and you started to, do you know where this is going? No, but I think we need to end the show. <laughs> you started to tell Didn't me. you say you were going to end the show right now? Yeah. No, I said after this story where I triumph. And you told me a story and it was about a kid whose name you didn't know and Owen. And then he did this. I was, I was telling you about something that I saw happen. When you dropped school. Owen off. Yeah. Yes. And then you said, and he did this. Mm-hmm. And I said, <clears throat> Owen did this? And you gave me yeah. <clears throat> the most disappointed, mm-hmm. like, yeah, just harumph, disappointed look. And I said, what? And you're like, well, you're on your phone. Yeah. And I said, uh-uh. <laughs> well, I didn't say that. I said, I'm Googling something for you. But <laughs> do you guys want to know what I was Googling? wash and fold services that pick up and deliver. I just need to know how expensive it is. Um, because you were explaining that doing laundry is ruining your life. <laughs> laundry. This was, you guys, this is a audio. <clears throat> you were sitting on the edge. I was asleep, trying to sleep. You were sitting on the ed- edge of the bed going. <sighs> well, I, I, I was just all... pumping anxiety into the room, but not about this. No, you were anxious, but laundry, but but in I the just mi- wanna, wait. But I want to say, like <clears throat> earlier, we were talking story, about I, I, we were talking about laundry. Remember the the key part of the beginning of it, which was when she does her and her, the kids' laundry. Well, I know. So in well, other I wasn't going to include that in what we send out. I was going to have you fold that. No, no. I I just want everyone to understand that when we talk about the laundry in this house. Allison will put the laundry in the washing machine for the kids and her. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and then I, you know, I would put it in the dryer and then she folded it once and her hands fell apart. <laughs> uh, but I'm still doing all of my own laundry. No one's touching my fucking laundry. Yeah. So, well, that's why I just wanted to see how expensive it would be to have someone to get it done because it can be quite affordable. Uh, at least it was when I lived in New York. It was the same price. All right, so going you're to Googling Laundromat. this. Yeah. So then you're like, well, you're on your phone. Yeah. And I said. I said it more masculine than that, but go ahead. I said I said it in a really sexy, masculine way. Let's hear how it sounded. Oh, I, you, you can. You you're know like, you're on your phone. <laughs> it's like, well, like, you're on your phone. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. No. It was like, you're on your phone. So I said, I can repeat back to you verbatim every single thing you said to me, it was unclear what you said. And you're like, okay, okay. And I'm like, no, I will, I'm going to repeat. To you. And I put my phone down and I repeated back to you verbatim the story you told me. All right. But- and then you said, 
I am sorry. <laughs> I owe you an apology. This was my fault. A I didn't realize that I said he. Pretty big of me. It was, yeah. but let's so, just remember the part. But it's like you story? called my bluff or I called my own bluff. Yeah. And then I was able I do you remember I told you every every single word you had said to me, I repeated mm-hmm. it back. All and right. that so it felt good. So so in this case, mm-hmm. you you got it. You were listening. You were that, but yeah, most of the time when you're But I'm your bringing phone, up this case. This right, is the one know, I'm bringing but, up. But 90% of the time, you're checked out on your phone. You're texting someone. That's not true. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, it is true, but go ahead. I have pretty good recall. Well, that's fine. But then don't get mad at me if I'm listening and I'm doing something else and you're like, but you, do you the same don't thing have to good me. recall. That's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> you see the difference? But how do I know you're listening, though? That's the part. That's... You can assume I'm listening. How many times are we, like, watching TV or something, and then uh, you're on your phone, and you're not paying a goddamn bit of attention? That's different than you talking to me and me not paying attention. That's the, I'm tuned out from the television. But you understand from my perspective, it looks the same. <laughs> Well, yeah, but one's important. What you say is important. I know. What the TV says is not that important. I know. Okay, I'm glad, I'm glad, glad we agree. That, anyway. I, that what I say is important. Yeah. I will also want to point out that yeah. for you, a marital win is not us connecting, <laughs> you know, like us making our marriage stronger. It's literally you being correct about something. Well, it it's was like a literally win. A, a victory in it a wasn't, competitive sense. Okay, it wasn't a marital win. It was a, it's okay. You it can was have a, it. No, it is a competition. You're right. No, you're right. It's not a marital win. It was a win. It was points on the board. It was a, a win in a mar- a bit of marital conflict that comes up frequently. It's fine because unlike you, I'm okay admitting when I'm wrong. You, I, I apologize. Okay, anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. I would like to remind you that I have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Allison Rosen. Now is really the time to step up. Please, thank you for your support. Uh, and I put up part two of the weight and weight loss episode, which people have been um, appreciating the candor. I said candor, like condor, the candor of. So check that out, and audio when, and video levels. And when Allison shamelessly puts out those Amazon links, click through. Please fucking click through, you guys. You don't even have to get the thing. if I reach a certain level, am I allowed to speak about this? I don't know. There's these things called creator rewards. We don't want to get decreatorized. Right. Okay, listen, I don't know if I can say it or not, but... If it helps a lot. It helps. If a lot of revenue happened to be shipped this month, it could help. So click through. Uh, and then I, I mean, just make, I don't I, even know if I can say click through. So I make your link on my homepage. That's smart. I mean, my Amazon homepage. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be someone who's telling you to do that, but I would say if I post a product, Check it out. And I did a uh, Substack, Substack about all the skincare that I use. And that is flying off the shelves. AllisonRosen.substack.com. All of our household money is going into that face. So you better uh, right. make sure. But you there's keep plenty it. of affordable options in there as well. There and really are. By the I'm way. kind of a defluencer because I had been using SkinCeuticals C and CE ferulic mm-hmm. vitamins. It's like the gold standard of vitamin C that everyone tells you, to, and it's like $180 a bottle. It oxidizes, it smells, it doesn't work. The one that you discovered, which you can find in the Substack, that one for me works so much better. It's a good and one. And then I found an even cheaper one that has even more of that ingredient, that particular vitamin C, which is like text, Textra Deckel, Heckel, Jekyll, Corbate, Scorbate. Mm-hmm. I don't know if, if it works as well though. Uh, so I'm I'm testing that one right now. The but brand anyway. that I found is really good. Yeah, but um, you're gonna have to find out on Substack. Mm-hmm. AllisonRose.substack.com. Mm-hmm. Okay, everyone, thank you for listening. I mm-hmm. love you. Mm-hmm. You matter. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. Bye. Hey, do you know about the Allison Rosen show? We had a good time, but now we gotta go. 